What's going on, everybody? This is John Bain. I want to welcome you to the worst survival games on Steam. Hopefully, you guys are doing good today. I'm doing good myself. Don't want to forget to mind you all to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be here when stuff happens. Big shout out to the patrons on Patreon and the supporters on Twitch. Thank you all so very much for helping keep the channel going. So today, we're checking out Axe Survival. Explore and survive. Fight hunger and thirst to adopt these two rules. Collect your loot to defend yourself. Build your house and build your house. <laughs> Be careful. People affected by the outbreak can break you up for meat. Okay, break me up for meat. We shall. This game has been out since January 15, 2019, so it's had a little time to get developed. There's another section here that says about this game. Uh, build your building and forget to try to survive in this open world. It will be a little harder every day to get used to surviving only every day. That's a run on sentence if I've ever heard one before. Collect spoils to fight hunger, thirst, and cold and make life easier. So yeah, there we go. Uh, it looks like there's a plenty of quality reviews. You guys can check it out if you want to. But well, let's go ahead and get this game installed and started up, shall we? I'm booting up the game. There is a legal agreement. It says the legal agreement specified by our company or distributor company is deemed to be accepted automatically by our users. Within the game, the communication between players of insults or blasphemous communication is punished in time or indefinitely. In the game, cheating or pirate third late party, illegal ways of cheating or criminalizing those who are permanently banned and accounts are closed. Each player automatically accepts this agreement when he or she accesses the game. In the game, cheating or pirate third party illegal ways of cheating or criminalizing those who are permanently banned and accounts are closed. All right. After entering the game, we are welcomed by this lovely, lovely title screen. Uh, basic settings look like we got here. Play game settings, quit. Uh, there's welcome John Bay at the top. There's a version number in the lower right. Music and crickets. I think that's crickets. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. On clicking settings, it changes our aspect ratio of the game, it seems like. Uh, lovely sound accompanied by that. Uh, game quality high. There it goes. Screen re resolution got moved to 800 by 600. Uh, basic stuff here. Nothing major to scream about. Other than the fact that it completely changed my aspect ratio when opening the settings. Yay. Clicking through the screen resolution, it doesn't really do much for us here. As you can see, it's not updating. I can go up to a 1920 by 1080, which is a standard issue. Applying it didn't do anything. At the time, I did not notice a little red arrow in the lower right-hand corner, and I ended up just clicking on the play game button. And uh, yeah. And as you can see, it kept the setting screen up, and I could click the play button in the background. It's great. I end up restarting the game and going right into it. And this intro screen here, uh, one of the things you want to do when you're out, like, sh giving information about what your game's about is actually make it easy for the user to understand it. And as you can see here, it's very clear text that we can read. Uh, getting started notes. Hello to Big Island. Take advantage of the opportunity offered to you to get out of here. You have to spend, uh, I think that's 50 days on the island for this kit to repair the spacecraft and re restore, restore the island. Yeah. Uh, it looks like it's in five different languages, too. Apparently, we pretty much have to go down here, survive 50 days, repair it, and try not to die. That's pretty much it, and survive. Once we get through that screen, we have a character selection where we can create or quit. A lot of, like, dated, like, visual effects in this game, too, if you can't tell. And wherever I move my mouse over, I get the magical sound. So let's go and get our name up, John Bain, and we also choose a class. Those classes are Volund and Protector. Uh, let's go with Volund. Clicking Create, we get to choose our character by hitting Select. And we are welcomed by this beauty here. Movement, standard issue movement. We can scroll back the the camera, which is great. We can uppercut rocks and uppercut rocks. <laughs> Opening the character screen, we get to get to see the character status. There is a craft menu. It shows us what our stats are. Health, hydration, hunger, temperature, stamina. We have an inventory. Uh, I did not see the item in the inventory. I press escape to close it. It would not close it. You actually have to press the inventory key yet again. 
And I, I feel like the select a box sound is a little overbearing and repetitive. So day broke upon us already, and we have to do the thing that we do in every survival game, which is try to punch trees. These overgrown ferns apparently cannot be punched. The ferns themselves are a 2D graphic that rotate with you, billboarding, if you will. So, uh, yeah, they're just there for, uh, I guess, to fill out the landscape. Now, if you thought the sound effects for punching a rock were amazing, 3D sound on punching a tree. And, man, can we punch a tree good. And you cannot hold down your button. You have to actually click repetitively to actually get it down. And we can F the wood. Um, yeah, let's, let's, let's F the wood or F wood or whatever it's supposed to be. But yeah, I, yeah, this was, it was good. It was good. Moving around, you can see how the lighting isn't really actually applied correctly to the scene either. This vehicle here is dilapidated. Obviously you can't punch it, but you can F open and F close the trunk. We got metal, we got nails and we received a drink too. Mmm, drinks. I took this opportunity to actually look at my character. And you can see, uh, I, I fit this environment perfectly. I guess being a Volund will, you know, make you look kind of like a zombie yourself. So, uh, and that, I guess, it, it, I mean, it could be worse. Running animations look extremely stiff, if you couldn't tell. As we gather more objects. And we get back to our tree punching. I'd like to craft a couple things, if possible, to get, get a little bit of a taste of the system. After gathering a few pieces of wood and whatnot, I decided to go ahead and try to craft something. And noticing then, in my inventory, I did have an axe. Now, uh, the usage of the inventory items are just not that good. Uh, they, they, the way the UI works and whatnot, like moving stuff around, trying to craft things, is not friendly at all. I end up getting the axe on my hotbar after messing around with just where actually it's supposed to go and escape again is just not friendly also when you close and open the little crafting bin area will not replace will not remove it from it and i thought that possibly uh that was blocking me from putting the axe anywhere i, I didn't care where i put it there we go we got it on the hot bar and again pressing escape now when you hold an axe this is how you hold an axe my friends this is like you you just you just know you're ready for business you just know you're ready for business running up to the tree and using the axe on it as well it just is top-notch animations and the sound effects again top-notch no 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 money was spared on this one after collecting a decent little bit amount of wood i i do have to note that the skybox actually looks pretty decent in this game now another thing that isn't decent in this game is the sound design as you can hear there we can hear that bear like it's almost on top of us i decided to risk it for the biscuit and went ahead full charge in to fight this glorious battle with this bear intensity and the bear is is, is still alive it dropped bear meat i guess and a meta pack it had a meta pack in it and it's still breathing. It's still breathing. Yeah. And the length of time that you can hear, well, the distance you can hear the breathing of the bear as you walk away is, is, it's still going. It's still going. So, there we go. There we go. Since we chopped trees, I figured I'd try my hand at chopping rocks. And it's about the same thing. High quality animations, great sound effects, and the rock drops through the ground and leaves an F rock. So I decided to gather some more F rocks. After gathering a few F rocks, it was time to craft. We hadn't crafted anything yet. Now the crafting interface is one of the worst ones I've ever seen. I like having the menu there, but you can't actually shift click, right click or anything to automatically put it into the crafting pool, if you will. You have to individually click on each individual thing and drag it down and it won't remove it or show that it's been used already 
to, to in the craft you know area pool if you will to, to be used it's very very clunky and you craft it and it doesn't remove the object and then when you try to it just it's just it's just bad uh placing the foundation down that we crafted as you can see doesn't get rid of the grass or anything like that it just sits there so i decided to go ahead and just gather some more f rocks and and continue After collecting an F rock and a tree, I decided to check out the map. And we have a map here, but we have no marker of us on the map, but we have a mini map in the lower right. So I guess we're supposed to guess where we are on the map based on our mini map and apply it to the large map, I guess. I don't know. I, I, I did end up working out where exactly we were. If you go by how the, the direction or the shape of the dark green is versus the light green and the road, it was notice I was near the, the big town. I was on my way to the big town. So guess what? We're going to the big town. I chopped down many trees and rocks on the way to the big town, hitting up whatever dilapidated vehicles I could to get whatever mass I could in case we wanted to craft more stuff later. Did get drinks. I was getting really low on hydration and hunger. And it, it, it is, you'll notice this is a common theme through the game is the, the hydration and hunger just, just decrease so quickly, it's so quickly. While traveling to the town, I came across my first zombie, I assume, in the game. They run rather quickly. They come in your face. And... It's the, some of the uh, most intense moments you'll ever have in gaming history. The zombie continues to make sounds after you kill it, too. So if there's multiple zombies around... You won't be sure if it's a real one, of that well, one that's alive, quote unquote, or one that's dead, quote unquote. So, it, it adds an air of mystery. I have to say, an air of mystery in which you know you have, you never know. I want to say by this time the crickets were just not stopping. True crickets were not stopping at all. And I found that since you don't have any type of negatives for just swinging, I just turned on my auto clicker and just kind of just swung, swung all the whole time, so I didn't even worry about it. It was, it was all right. So making it to our first major POI, went to the first building we found, and there is actually drinks and food to be found here. Fish food, uh, which I don't plan to be feeding any fish, but I assume it's canned fish, and I got jumped. And all you need to do is just kind of back up. Back up. And, and kill stuff. And as you saw there, I thought I was getting attacked by a third zombie, but it was just one of the dead zombies making sounds at me when I was nearby. Determined I was to find myself some sort of weapon technology. Uh, I was uh, forced to b do battle with this ladder. Uh, apparently, I don't know how to climb ladders in the game, so, you know, that, that's way beyond our league, you know, of what not of managing ourselves in such a game. As dawn approached of day two of day one, uh, we got jumped by more zombies as I looked around. There was some, uh, you know, it was a little bit of pressure. I don't really mind that in a POI, but it's basically just back up, back up. The biggest pressure I had was trying to find water and food. And also, to get on top of here to get me some, uh, I get apparently like a weapon, a gun of some sort. And since I couldn't climb the ladder, I had to get kind of clever with getting on top over there. Finally getting my hands on a firearm, it was an M24. After the explosive, you know, battle axe damage and things like that, I was really excited to try out the M24. Because the ammo was not as easy. Equipping it and then using the zoom in feature, the scope, showed my character's head in the reticle. You could see it right there, zooming in and out. It was, if you shot straight down, you could pretty much shoot your head off. You know, it was kind of hilarious. Also, another thing I found out was that the zombies don't have, like, any type of shortage of range and a vertical state. So, standing on top of the building, they could hit me. You could see the little blood splatter happen here. Now, the explosiveness of this gun is just crazy. And it takes forever to reload it. I'm furiously clicking left click right now to fire it repetitively, and that's as fast as it will shoot. Luckily, at least one shot will destroy the zombie, but it's nowhere near efficient enough for close combat. Obviously, it should be for long range, but if the head continues to pop in the reticle when you try to shoot with the scope, uh, it's 
basically useless. So I switched back to the battle axe. Because, you know, battle axe. Checking out more of the POIs, there is more ammunition, there's food in these towns, there's more weapons, uh, and it, it's... Uh, what would you call it? it uh, very well thought out planning and placement of important objects in which you have to forge and gather for and increase the engagement that you're having with the game. So, I persisted through the night, extremely hungry, trying to eat what I could, went around exploring some, went to a lake, uh, found some water, drank the water at the lake, uh, high quality animations yet again. Decided to try to hunt some deer. And I could actually line my shot up at a horizontal distance and shot the deer. Yes. <laughs> Big explosions, blood everywhere, running in for the taste they meet. And it had a meta pack and it did have deer meat. But if you listen, The deer is still doing deer things. <laughs> All right, grab the deer meat, put it in my inventory. And I was going to put down a campfire and cook it. But. campfire does absolutely nothing it's just a campfire it just sits there you walk over you don't get burned by it. it just sits there no interactive menu nothing like that no way to increase the quality of the meat deer meat we just got so all i did was just eat it and said screw it and stood in the campfire for a minute and then left being as hungry as i was decided to head to another poi figured that the factory zone would be a good place to go to it was pretty well near there just need to run over there and get it done as I approached it, there was a small POI on the way, decided to check that as well, and I was greeted by a friendly zombie police officer, which I smacked upside the head, and several other ones. Again, in this POI, the same thing. There's a very small amount of food, a little bit of ammunition, some med kits, just the whole nine yards of what has already happened already. It was nighttime by the time I got there. I was dying because I was out of food. I played this game so far about an hour and 15 minutes straight, I would have to say. I feel like that's about how long it has been. And it's about the same gameplay loop. There's a bit of intensity going on trying to get in this factory. There's a fence around the front of it, as I found out. But I was very hungry. I was so hungry. Like, on the left there, I, I, I don't I don't know if I like that or not. I mean, if I, it, a lot of things in this game doesn't match itself, if you can't tell. I feel like the UI on upper left doesn't match the day two in the upper right that doesn't match the hot bar at the bottom that doesn't match the mini map on the right doesn't match the you're so hungry. Oh, me so hungry. Um, anyway. I finally make it around the fence to actually find an entranceway into the factory area. And, well, I end up uh, dying because of hunger. And you gave me a little quick of F wood in front of my face just to remind me. Now, if you notice, I dropped all my stuff here. And uh, it was a little bit disheartening. So after this much time, I decided to go ahead. We're going to try out some of the building, too. I don't know how much of it I could deal with by this point. And you know, it, it, I try to do it in any survival game. If I'm going to build, if I'm going to play it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to build. I, I'm having a hard time forming words here just to how bad this was by this point. So on the way back to getting my stuff to be able to build stuff i gathered a lot of wood a lot of rocks a lot of poi stuff on the way crafted up some foundations just to see where we're at uh and i made it back to the factory i tried to build foundations around on actual objects outside of the terrain and it won't let you which is fine um that that, that makes sense to try to not let you block it especially since it could be i think a multi-point no play anything going on but anyway uh, heading over to the entrance of the fence, I said, screw it, we're going to try to build something here. So I went ahead and started placing the foundations. It snapped together nicely. We had these great sound effects yet again. And I kept getting attacked, but I was like, I was determined. I was determined to build my foundations here. My floors, if you will. Now, the floors would only stack up to three in a stack, which makes no, absolutely no sense to me. Uh, whatever. And so I had to do each one. I could put them on my hot bar, but I was, by this time, I was just like, whatever. Not to lie. Not going to lie. And uh, once I got the foundations down, I looked at it and I was like, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. So I decided to finish it up by doing a little bit of exploring. 
there is a spaceship on the map and decided, hey, I'm going to go check out the spaceship. We're going to see what it's about. And, well, they headed that way. The spaceship itself looked pretty cool. Uh, there's stuff strewn about it. It looks like like the military supposedly came here to, to fight it or something like that. And this annoying alarm continued to go on nonstop. The spaceship is completely worthless to me right now because I could do nothing to it except listen to the alarm. There's nothing to interact with. You could climb on top of it. You could do all these other things. But at this point, I felt like I had enough. Uh, this is act survival. I, it, it's, it, it, don't play it. Just don't play it. If I had to give this game a rating, I would say it, I would give it one F wood out of five. And yeah, that's the time we've got for today. Hopefully you guys are liking what you see. If you're liking what you see, don't forget to slam the like button. It does help me a lot. And I really do appreciate it. Again, big shout outs to the patrons on Patreon and the supporters on Twitch for helping to keep the channel rolling. And as always, guys, thank you so very much. And y'all have a nice day. <laughs>